Hi there, welcome back. We are going to look at volume and capacity okay, in this short little session that we have together. First of all, what is the difference between volume and capacity? Let's have a look here. Volume is the space taken by the object itself, while capacity refers to the amount of substance, like a liquid or gas, that a container can hold. Volume is measured in cubic units, while capacity is measured in other units, such as liters and gallons. And what we're going to do with this, folks, is we're going to take this whole thing of volume and, and, and capacity, and we're going to link it in with finances. All right, so let's have a look at this kind of example. An urn of boiling water in an office has a capacity of 20 liters. If it is filled to a maximum capacity, calculate the number of 250 ml cups that can be shared from it. Okay? So we have an office. In the office, we have an urn. And we want to know how many people would be able to have a cup of tea from one urn of boiling water. So the first thing we need to say is this, that I have 20 liters of um, water, and I want to divide it by 250 mils because that's how many, or that's how much liquid a cup can hold, 250 mils. Now, when I look at this, suddenly I say, oh my giddy on, something's wrong. And what is wrong is this, that I actually have the unit of liters and the unit of milliliters. And folk, I cannot divide when I've got different units. I cannot add when I have different units. I cannot subtract when I have different units and I cannot multiply when I have different units. So let's get these units to be the same. Now I can do one of two things. Either change the liters to milliliters or the milliliters to liters. It really doesn't matter which one. I'm going to change my liters to milliliters. So I'm going to say to myself, myself, I've got 20 liters and I know that there are a thousand milliliters in a liter. So I've actually got 20 times a thousand. Divide that now by 250. So 20 times a thousand is going to give me 20,000. And I'm going to divide that by 250. Now my brain is rather small and it doesn't work properly. So I'm using a calculator. I've got 20,000. I'm going to divide that now by 250 and I land up with 80. So in other words, folks, if I have an urn and it's a 20 liter urn, I put 20 liters of water in, boil the water, and I've now got a whole group of people who are coming for tea, I can say, you know what, I've got enough water here to give 80 people a nice hot cup of tea. Hey? If I have an office of 81 people, I shame someone's going to get some cold coffee. All right, so here we go. Next question. After everyone has had their morning tea, there are only six liters of water left in the urn. How much water is this in milliliters? Okay, so we got six liters. So obviously we don't making 80 cups of tea. We got six liters left and we want to convert it to milliliters. Now remember, we got milliliters, we got liters, and there's a difference of a thousand or a thousand milliliters in a liter. If I go this way, I multiply. If I go this way, I divide. I want to change the liters to milliliters. So I'm going to do something with a thousand. Because I'm going this way, I'm going to multiply. And so my answer is 6,000 milliliters. Next question. How many 250 ml cups of water are left in the urn? Well, we just said now I've got 6,000 milliliters left. So I've got 6,000 milliliters left. I'm going to divide that by 250 milliliters. Calculator's going to do it. I'm not going to do it. 6,000, divide that by 250, and I get an answer of 24 cups. So I can make another 24 cups of tea. So if I've got another 10 people who still got to have tea, I don't have to top up my urn. I can just use the water. But if I've got another 30 or 40 people who need tea, ish, this is not going to be enough, folk. I'm going to have to add water to that urn. Okay. 
what percentage is the remaining six liters of the urn's capacity? So we have six liters out of a total 20 liters. Because I'm changing it to a percentage, I'm going to multiply by 100%. So let's do that. We got six divided by 20, multiply that by 100 equals 30%. And please take note, and we have explained this in one of our previous sessions, this percent sign is coming here. So I'm not going to say 6 divided by 20 times 100 percent. It's just times 100 because my percent in this case is a unit. Okay, so it's 30 percent. That percent is in my answer, so I can't use it in the calculation. My next question. Jobo is building a new flower bed and is using a bucket to carry soil from another part of the garden to the new flower bed. He knows his bucket has a capacity of 10 litres. If 300 litres of soil must be moved, and for each trip Jabu fills a bucket to the top with soil, how many trips will Jabu have to make with the bucket to move all the soil? Okay, so he has got to move 300 litres and his bucket carries 10 litres. So we're going to say, okay, Bru, you've got 300 litres. We're going to divide it by 10 litres, and that's going to give me 30 trips. Yes, this O is not only going to have strong muscles in his arm from carrying the 10 uh, litres of sand, but he's just going to have huge muscles in his legs because he's got to do 30 trips carrying this. Must be an easier way. Let's have a look. Jabu decides that 10 litres of soil is too heavy to carry. How many trips will he have to make to move all the soil if he only fills the bucket with 7 litres of soil at a time? So again, he's still got the 300 litres of soil to move. So we're going to say, well, now he's got 300 litres to move, but he can't carry 10 litres. It's just too heavy, and his muscles just don't work. They're not like mine. Eh? Mine are pretty big. His are not big. So we're going to say 300 divided by 7, and let's do that. We're going to say 300 divided by 7, and we get, ha-ha, 42,857, so 42,857, blah, 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 trips. Now, folks, we're going to look at this as an appropriate rounding thing. We can't make comma 857 of a trip. He can't carry the bucket for only comma 8 of a trip and then say, okay, cool, that's it, and then drop the bucket. Okay? Can't happen because it hasn't got to where it's got to get. So either he makes 42 trips or he makes 43 trips. Now, if he makes 42 trips, he's not going to have carried enough soil because he's not going to have 300 liters. Let me prove that to you. What is 42 times 7? So 42 times 7 gives me an answer of 294 liters. Guys, he hasn't carried 300 liters. So 42 is not going to be enough. What happens if we multiply it by 43? So I'm now going to say, okay, so we got 7 liters. We're going to multiply that by 43 and it now 301 liters. So he doesn't need 301, but it at least gives him the 300 liters. So he has to do 43 trips. Understand appropriate rounding? Right in the beginning of the series, we looked at rounding. If you missed that, go back, find that episode, and have a look at it. It's very, very important. Okay, so now he's got to, before he was going to do 30 trips, now he's got to do 43 trips. I tell you what, this O's leg muscles are going to be huge. Eh? Like, Jabu's friend Matthew arrives with his wheelbarrow and a spade. He suggests that Jabu should rather move the soil using the wheelbarrow. Thank heavens for Matthew. Matthew's got some brain says, hey, listen, bro, I've been watching you. This is sad, hey? You're carrying buckets and buckets and buckets. Just use a wheelbarrow. If the wheelbarrow has a capacity of 150 liters and they fill it to capacity, how many trips will he have to make? Well, he has to move 300, and 300 liters. Each new uh, wheelbarrow can take 50, 150 liters. 300 divided by 150 is two wheelbarrow journeys. 
How much easier is that? Okay. Right. Jonathan uses the following recipe to make chocolate muffins. He says, in this chocolate muffin recipe, we've got to use two-thirds of a cup of baking cocoa, two large eggs, two cups of flour, a half a cup of sugar, two teaspoons of baking soda, one and a third cup of milk, a third cup of sunflower oil, one teaspoon of vanilla essence, and half a teaspoon of salt. Okay, quite a recipe. Chocolate muffins. Gotta love chocolate muffins, guys. They just like the best. All right, so what are my questions? My questions are, if one teaspoon is five milliliters, calculate how much baking soda Jonathan will use. Give your answer in milliliters. Okay, so how much baking soda did he need? Okay, baking soda, he needed two teaspoons. So if he needed two teaspoons, um, and each teaspoon is five mils, we're going to multiply it by five, and we get 10 milliliters. Guys, that's not hard. You can easily do that. Next question. Calculate the amount of vanilla essence Jonathan will use in this recipe. Give your answer in milliliters. Okay, so how much vanilla essence did he need? The recipe states that he needed one teaspoon. How much is a teaspoon? A teaspoon is five milliliters. So we know he's only going to use five milliliters of vanilla essence. Jonathan does not own measuring cups, but he does own a measuring jug, calibrated in milliliters. How many milliliters of flour does he need? Okay, so we told one cup is 250 mils. How many cups of flour did he need to use? So cups of flour, he needed two cups. So we're going to try and find two cups. If one cup is 250 mils, multiply by two, he needs 500 mils of flour. Okay, um, next question. If Jonathan buys a 100 milliliter bottle of vanilla essence, how many times will he be able to use the same bottle if he bakes the same amount of muffins each time? So we've got 100 milliliters and we want to know how many times he could m use this. And vanilla essence, we said he needed 5 mils per batch of brownie, uh, um, chocolate muffins. So if he has now got 100 mils of vanilla essence, we're going to divide that by 5 mils and our answer is 20. So he can make 20 batches of chocolate muffins right from one bottle of vanilla essence now the question says the recipe above is used to make 30 muffins calculate how many cups of flour jonathan will need to make 45 muffins right so one for flour we said he needed two cups of flour so let's put this now in perspective we are working out that two cups of flour make 30 muffins, right? We want to know how many cups will 45 muffins need. Now, folk, always go to one, right? Because if I know how many cups I need for one muffin, then I'll be able to work out how many cups I need for 45 muffins. So I'm going to say, okay, so I've got two cups and two cups will make me 30 muffins. Right. Now, 45 muffins, before 45 muffins, let me find out one muffin. How did I get this 30 to become one? I divide by 30. So I'm going to do the exact same thing here. Two divided by 30. How do I make 1 into 45? I times by 45. So I'm going to do the exact same thing this side. 2 divided by 30 times 45. And let's see what 
we actually going to land up getting here. Let's just drop this a little bit more. And 2 divided by 30. And then multiply that by 45. And my answer is 3. So I'm going to need 3 cups of flour if I want to make 45 muffins. Okay, quite a lot to make. And... Um, at least we'll have enough flour. Right, in this segment, because time has moved on, we covered the following. We integrated finance with volume and capacity. Folk, practice, practice, and practice. Have a good day, and I'm sure we'll be seeing each other soon. Cheers.